in the class. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the scheme of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, to stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Now, I want to remind us that, that Paul was talking to the church of Ephesus because they, there was a lot of false teaching going on and there are persons that were spreading um, doctrines that, were, that was not true. They were trying to speak against what Paul and the other apostles were depositing in the, in the churches. Paul was going around setting up churches and he was telling them that the weapons were fighting. So, you know, I know some of us might have been gangsters and in our day and some of us might have been in a place of where you look at, you know, one of us too hard, we were, we're ready to fight. But unfortunately, our karate will not work when it comes to the spiritual warfare. But we have a weapon that God has given to us, and that's the weapon of prayer. I want to submit to you tonight because I know it is a labor. When you are laboring in prayer, you could get discouraged because sometimes it feels like your prayer is not reaching the roof. Sometimes you feel like you're just saying a lot of repetition and nothing is happening. The enemy, Paul said, good and evil is always present. Satan, according to Daniel 10, he's always trying to wear out the saints of God. So intercessors, you are the first set of people that will hit, get the blunt of the blow because you are the one that are watching the gate of your city. You're watching the perimeters of your city. You're standing as a guard around your city, around your family, around your church, around your country, around your neighborhood. And so I want to say to you, it is vitally important that we be charged and ready for the task, not just one day, but every day. Now, I know Pastor Hinsey mentioned that this is 40, the, the day of ascension. Listen, 40 also means the time of testing and trial. We look at the word, the number 40. 40 was when Jesus, when he was tempted of the devil in the wilderness. And after that, Jesus was empowered. He prayed and fasted and he was empowered. And he went and he began his ministry. Three years of ministry. It took him 30 years to get prepared for this ministry, for the great work that he was about to do. I want to say to you, and I want to encourage you, that God has not forgotten you. According to Jeremiah 29 and 11, the plans that God has for your life, they're still there. God still has need and still has desire and still is hearing your prayer. And so I want to, um, let me read First Thessalonians. And let me slow down because I get, I, get I get a little excited. First Thessalonians 5, 16 and 18 says, Rejoice always and pray without ceasing. Give thanks to God in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Now, when Paul said to pray without ceasing, he thought the church, the Thessalonians church, he thought that they had backslidden. He thought that, you know, the, the false talk doctrine had gotten to them. But when he sent Timothy over, he realized that they were doing well. So he was telling them rejoice, but he also reminded them the power of prayer. All through the books that Paul had written, he will tell us about warfare and about prayer and how important it is for us to remain prayerful. Now, I want to, um, the last scripture I'm going to read before we continue is 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 4. And this is a very familiar passage. It says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds. The church at Corinth had all kinds of sexual immorality, and Paul was writing to them to let them know again that is the enemy that is behind everything that is going on. The evil that is behind, that is happening, is because of the enemy. One of the most, I have attended a lot of prayer meetings, whether the church was large, medium, small. Prayer was the least attended. I've attended church with over 500 members and maybe five persons show up, maybe 10 persons show up to the prayer. 
the prayer lasted literally an hour. And in that hour, most of it was just talking, not praying. I've attended prayer meeting where only the pastor showed up because Satan know that when the saints of God began to pray, something happened. I want to say to you, wonderful women of God, when you open your mouth and you pray, something happens in the kingdom of darkness. There's a great explosion. You are causing havoc in hell. When something, when you begin to pray, it is like you are just disrupting. You are frustrating the kingdom of darkness. So I want to encourage you tonight because I know sometimes we can get to the place of where we don't want to pray or where we don't feel like praying. And that is a trick from the enemy. So I want to let you know tonight, tonight that God has heard your prayer. He is hearing your prayer. Remember, you know, sometimes we are praying for our, I don't know if any of you have ever felt like this, praying for your wayward child, praying for your marriage, praying for your job. And you're praying and, so, and it just seems like the more you pray, it seems like the more the warfare is heightened. I want to say to you that that is a trick from the enemy. Don't stop praying and don't stop believing. Whatever you do, do not come down off the wall. Do not come down off your watch. Do not move from your position. Whatever happens in your life, no matter what the enemy may bring your way, women of God, we need you. Because when you move from the position of being a gatekeeper or an intercessor, you open the door and there's a link there for the enemy to come in. I want to say, I, I want to go back to the beginning. Let me go back. I like to go back to foundations because it's very, it's vitally important. I want to reaffirm. Um, we have to now, as you were talking about your sevenfold and moving into a new dimension in prayer, that means you need new strategies. You can't do the same thing in this season. This is a different season. As we see, the world has been paused. Everything has been shut down. Never in the history of my lifetime, or I don't know many other, there might be some people that have experienced this before. And this has gone on. This has happened every hundred years in the earth realm. But I'm telling you, the earth was shut down. Everything, no one, there was nobody that could, we can ask China, China can ask us. We couldn't go to Russia. Everyone was suffering from the same fate. So it's time because Satan knows, according to Revelation, that he has but a short time. He knows that he has a short time. And so what is he doing? He is moving to and fro the earth realm, trying to frustrate you, get you distracted, to think about your bills, to think about the problems that you have, and to think about even the sickness that may be in your body on tonight. You might be suffering from sickness, and it has really been a challenge. And what the things you wanted to do, you were not able to do it because every time you try to go forward, the enemy was like, all, you're always going, having to go to the hospital or always having to do something else. But I want to say to you today that the enemy is a liar and will always be a liar because the power has been given unto us. It's time for us to up the ante. That means we can't pray the little now and let me down to sleep or please, Lord, bless him, Lord, or please, Lord, I plead the blood. Lord, bless my child. Lord, no, we got to now begin to ask the Holy Spirit, how do I pray? Show me how to strategically pray now for my country, for my child, how to pray for my marriage, how to pray for my boss, how to pray for my leaders, how to pray for whatever we're praying for. We need to now get divine intervention. Things mm -hmm. are changing. We are getting closer to the end time. Things are changing. The Bible says men will become what? Lovers of themselves. They will love They will love themselves and they will have no love or no regard for God. We are seeing that. So people have no regard for God and who God is. But one thing I know that God has not changed is that when the saints of God begin to pray, he said if we are faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say that any mountain. Listen to me, child of God. I don't care where you are. I don't care if you've been saved one year, five, 10, 20. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say that any mountain. Tell that mountain in your life to move because you have work to do. The fact that you are here tonight is an indication that your assignment is not completed. When your assignment is completed, then you would have expired. But the fact that you are on this line tonight means that you have 
uh, your purpose has not yet been fulfilled. I listened to Dr. Miles Monroe, and I love to quote this. He said two quotes. The Holy Spirit is the most important person on the earth. Intercessor, gatekeepers, the Holy Spirit is the most important person in your life. Intercessors, gatekeepers, prophetic dreamers, because some of you on this line, you dream, and you just brush it away, and you don't really talk about it. We need to hear your dreams. Your dreams could be the piece to a missing puzzle. Don't take your dreams lightly. Don't talk about it because it don't seem like it makes sense. It might not make sense to you. I want to talk to that person who's been dreaming. And God has been showing you things, but you have not been speaking that dream. You've not been saying the dream because you were afraid. You didn't feel like you were, you know, worthy enough or you just didn't understand. So you just brush it off your shoulder. Don't you know that you can have the answer? to the next world crisis? Don't you know that you can have the answer to the problem that we have going on in our country? You can have the answer because God trusted you by giving you a vision and a dream. It's time, intercessors and gatekeepers, for us to up the ante. We have to train to start change our strategy. Remember, in the book of Judges, God had many judges before he gave Israel a king. And there was a judge called Ehud. Ehud was left-handed. So when he got the king, he took the king by surprise because the king did not expect him to come at him with the left hand. So in this season, we got to go at Satan with the left hand. He, we have to surprise him. In other words, we have to go in the offense. We can't just be defensive and wait on him to come at us. We got to go now to the mouth of hell and begin to command some things and begin to say, listen, you have been, this spirit of infirmity has been in my body too long. I command you by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. You must leave. You got to go. That's the power that lies on the inside of you, intercessors and gatekeepers. You are the eyes of your city. You are the eyes of your community. You are the eyes of your family. You are the eyes of your government and your leaders. And so it is vitally important that you understand the importance of who you are to the kingdom of God. It's time for us to up the ante. When we up the ante, we increase the what we're doing. So if we're doing one night of prayer, that means we got to go to three. If we are fa and, and if we're not fasting, we got to start fasting. Because some things come only through fasting and prayer. We can't get results by just kneeling down for five minutes and saying, Lord, I ask that you touch my hands, touch my feet. Lord, I need money. No, that's the first level of prayer, which is asking. And God, listen to me, your heavenly father knows what you need. He already have it ready for you. You are an Abraham. You are under, under the Abrahamic covenant. And because you're under the Abrahamic covenant, everything is yours. You don't have to plead to God for it. It belongs to you. All you have to do is line yourself up with the word of God. My God from Zion, when you line yourself up with the word of God, listen to me, the blessings will overtake you. You won't even have to ask because when you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. I want you to hear me tonight. So those of you, I don't know who else is helping out with the prayer, but let me tell you, when you get there, if you sign one song, and that song didn't work. You got to begin to get in the presence of God and maybe sing two songs. But in other words, when you go in into prayer and you're starting your prayers now, you have to change your strategy. You have to change the way you do things. It is time for us to increase the ante. Now, I want you to know, whenever there's a war that's breaking out in a country, that country, if they know that they got defeated, they don't go back doing the same thing. They start to look and study the enemy. They try to figure out what caused them to lose that war. What can we do better? You have to study the enemy. I know sometimes we believe, you know, I don't think we should give Satan. We giving Satan too much glory. No, he likes when you put him, when you hide him. You need to highlight him. What did the Bible say in Ephesians? Don't be partakers of darkness, but instead expose them. We have to expose that demon to let people know that he is behind all of what we got. And we have to send the, we have to now send all the prayers and arrows to the enemy's camp. We got to begin to deal with him and his imps and everything that he's trying to do and trying to stop. Now, I want to go to the basic. What is prayer? Oh, well, I know. Yes, but please, let's indulge me for a moment. Prayer is a simply communicating with God. 
Prayer is not shakara baba, yala baba. That's beautiful. That's a part of prayer, but that's not the only type of prayer. You can pray by just simply you. Sometimes I pray with a cup of tea. I sit down and I'll have a cup of tea and I'll just talk with God and Lord, I just really love you. I just appreciate you. I just thank you. Sometimes I would have breakfast and talking to God. So prayer is simply you communicating with God and disciplining yourself to hear what he's saying. God has been speaking to some of you and some of you have been praying and for answers and you've been frustrated. You've been crying in the night and God was trying to get the answer to you, but you've been talking to him, but you are not waiting for him to speak back. Remember Psalms 1 says we must what? meditate on the word day and night so we can be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bring forth fruits in a season. When we get to that place of knowing the word and understanding our authority as a believer, listen, Satan will be in trouble. Hell will be in trouble when we fully come to the understanding of who we are and the power that God invested on the inside of us. In Matthew, the seventh chapter and the seventh verse, I want to talk about just quickly about the three dimensions of prayer. The first dimension is what I talked about in a, a few minutes ago is about asking. Everyone just asks, you know, mm -hmm. give me, can you give me this? Lord, I need that. Lord, you know, I need finances. Lord, I need food. Lord, I need a job. Lord, I need a car. And that's as much as it goes. There's no waiting. There's no meditating. There's no, um, you know, trying to read the word of God. There's no fasting. But that level of prayer, let me tell you, that's where the warfare, that's where a lot of people are fought. Because they're still li li literally at the foot of the cross, just begging Jesus, when he said, I have given you everything. When he said everything, you have access. When he's saying to you that you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. The second level of prayer is to seek him. Now, intercessors and gatekeepers, let me tell you, because you are intercessor, which means to stand in, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, which means to stand in the gap for somebody. Let me tell you, the warfare may seem greater because you're taking on what that person is feeling. You're taking that on to yourself and going to God on behalf of that person. That's a very, listen to me, that's a very, very heavy burden to carry. But you are equipped for it. You're ready for it. And the thing about it is, is when you walk in that anointed, that's where the blessings of God begin to flow. So how do we see God? Getting to know him. Getting to know his word. Getting to understand him. He is his word. Without us knowing the word, we cannot know God. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. All I'm doing is affirming what has already been said to you. Knowing the word. Seeking him. When you learn Matthew 6 and 33, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. All other things will be added unto you. When you learn that, you know what? I need to seek the Lord. I need to know him. I need to get to understand what it is that God has for my life. I need to know my purpose. I need to know what is it that he wants me to pray for. Every day as an intercessor, as a gatekeeper, you should say, Lord, give me this day my daily bread. Tell me what it is you have for me to do today. Now, here's the level of prayer that Paul was talking to at the church of Ephesus. The knocking, that's the warfare prayer. This is the prayer <laughs> where a lot of persons don't understand. Where you're going into warfare, and warfare is to the enemy. Prayer is unto God. Warfare is to the enemy. So now you get to the place of where, and Paul says, when he said um, the battle or what we're doing, it means that um, our warfare means, according to the Webster Dictionary, that there's a combat between two or more persons. There's a friction. So there's something that is going on in the earth realm. And God is saying, according to Ezekiel, I'm looking for somebody. And he has called each and every one of you before the foundation of the world. Listen to me. Before the foundation of the world, God had deposited in you the gifting of intercessing, intercessory and the gifting of prayer. I want to go back to dreams. There might be some of you that God called a seer. You could be a prophetic intercessor. That means that you are a seer. A seer back in the day, they were not prophets, but they were, they see prophetically through dreams and visions, and they were able to keep the city safe. Now, as a, as a gatekeeper, the Lord will show you the strong man of your city. He will show you the strong man of your family. He will show you the generational curse that you're dealing with. He will show you your opponent and let you know 
what you're dealing or what you're fighting. And so the thing about it is when he shows you the strong man, he empowers you now to be able to confront that strong man. How do you know that, Apostle Fletcher? Well, he told his disciples, this is, the, this is what he tells his disciples in Matthew. He's in Matthew 6 and 18 and 19. He said, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. He further goes to say to his disciples, behold, I give you power to tread on scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by no means shall hurt you. Child of God, nothing by no means shall hurt you. The devil has had his last time to mess with you. The devil should have done what he did before this season or before this night came because now God is getting ready to blow a fresh wind on the inside of you to empower you to greatness, to empower you to begin to speak into the atmosphere. God is going to honor your prayer. He's going to honor what you're doing. He's going to honor when you speak. God is going to honor when you get before him and begin to speak to him on behalf of his people. How do I know the intercessory work? Remember, when the children of Israel were coming out and um, they, were, they were very rebellious and God was really angry with them. And what happened was, um, he was like, I, I'm just going to destroy these. I'm going to destroy them. They, they're just having idols and God repented for even making them. He was upset with the children of Israel. I'm paraphrasing. And Moses prayed. And the Bible said when Moses prayed, God changed his mind and did not destroy the children of Israel. That's a powerful prayer. Don't you know that you could change God's mind for what's going on in your family? Don't you know that you could change God's mind for what's going on in your country, in your nation? Don't you know that you could change God's mind when you begin to pray? You can cause the mind and the heart of God to change because of your prayer, because of the prayer of the righteous. As a gatekeeper, that means you're a watchman. You're looking at the things that are coming in. The Bible says in Jude that there were many things that crept in unaware. There were spirits that crept in unaware. There are so much demonic powers that we're dealing with, whether we like to believe it or not. There are so much demonic entities that is right around us that we are not even able to, to see. There are persons that are going to the hospital and they're not sick. They're not sick and they, the doctor cannot tell what is wrong with them. The witches are working their best, doing all the spells when the power lies on the inside of you. The witches are sending spells and putting people in cages and putting families in bondages when the power lies on the inside of you. As you go with this second wind, as you go with this empowerment, knowing who you are and whose you are, the hell will be in trouble because now you're going to go in the power and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says you only need two or three of you. If two or three of you in Golden Gate's Native Baptist Church began to pray severely, let me tell you something. Hell will be in absolute trouble. You are praying now. So can you imagine if you join forces and you say, you know what? We are going to change the way we pray. We are going to combat the kingdom of darkness. We're going to protect our homes because, you know, sometimes we can just want to protect our families but that's a small victory because you still have the city you still have the neighborhood you still have the country you are uh, might not be affected but directly but you affected indirectly but whatever happens in your country in your church or in your neighborhood so let's get the greater victory because i let me tell you there are so many persons that are in bondage in our city there are so many people I don't know if you guys look on the streets and see how many more persons daily are being added to the street who have lost their minds and they're walking the street because something happened and we can't tell. But God has placed the power on the inside of us as intercessors, as gatekeepers to watch every spirit that tries to come in and tries to stop the work of God. Listen, the pastor has a lot of work to do. And it's not easy for the pastor. The pastor cannot be the gatekeeper and the intercessor. So they need persons that are going to stand in the gap and going to stand and watch the church that are going to stand and be able to say, you know what? I want you to understand here that uh, um, the, 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 it gives the pastor the boost and the oomph to keep going on. Um, there was a, a, I don't know if you know this gentleman in Jamaica. His name is um, Bishop Williams. And persons were asking him, how? 
have you been successful so long in your church? He said, you see, these ladies radio, those are the engine room to this church. They, while church, while I'm sleeping or while I'm about doing God's work, they are praying and they are fasting and they are keeping the gate of the city. They are keeping the gate of the church. They are keeping people. Listen to me. I know now, let me, in Isaiah, let me go here. In Isaiah 62, verse 6 and 7, it says, On your wall, O Jerusalem, I have set a watchman all day and all night. They were never silent. You who put the Lord in remembrance, take no rest and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and make it a praise to the earth. Habakkuk 2 says, I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the tower and look to see what they will say to me. And I will answer concerning my complaint. Intercessors, God is depending on you to stand in the gap for his people. God is depending on you to stand in the gap for those souls that need to be saved. God is depending on you to stand in the gap for the leaders of your country to make sure. Listen, we might not agree with everything that they're doing, but it's our duty to make sure that we as a body, as a nation is protected. Because when one hurt, all of us should hurt. And so in this season, I want to tell you, do not rest. Do not take what you're doing lightly. Do not take prayers lightly. There are times that God awakened some of you at night and you roll back over and slept because you were tired. But I want to say to you, the witches and Walla, they are very faithful. From 12 to 6 a.m., a lot of people die. They die in their sleep because we're sleeping while they're casting spells, while they are killing us in our sleep. There are a lot of persons that die mysteriously and it looks as if it's a regular death. I want to say to you, when God is now breathing upon you and say, hey, wake up, my daughter. I need you to pray for someone in Germany. Don't take it lightly because you could be saving not only someone's life, you could be saving a nation's life. God is looking for the intercessors. We are tired. There are people that is going around and around in evil cycles, evil cycles that's going around and around, the same thing every day. And some of you might feel like that. You might feel like you're not getting anywhere. But I want to encourage you today. God is hearing your prayer. He just tell me by, send me by to encourage you, to let you know, not only that he's hearing your prayer, but he is answering your prayer. Even though it might seem like it's not happening now, God is an on-time God. Remember Daniel. Daniel prayed. And what happened? That old rascal held up that prayer, and the angel was trying to get to deliver that message to Daniel. So I want to say and submit to you, the task that you've been given is a very serious task. It's a blessed task. It's a task that not many persons can handle. God knew what you can handle. He knew what you can take. He knew that if he put you as an intercessor, you're going to fight on behalf of someone. He knew that if he put you as an intercessor, you're going to begin to not just pray for your family, but you're going to pray for others. So I want to encourage you today to continue to study and hear what God is saying to you. Listen to me. You know, a lot of times we um, persons, you know, we hear the word and um, we take it lightly until something knocks at our door. And then we realize that, oh my God, I need to pray. Prevention is better than cure. This season, God had, we had, listen to me, we had a pandemic consecration. We couldn't go nowhere. Everyone, there were so many people that was crying out to God. The Lord began to show me so many people was praying and repenting and crying out to him because people were afraid that if they caught the disease, that they would have died. People didn't know they were going to live. People didn't know they were going to die. But many people began to pray. And many people began, began to cry out to the Lord. Intercessors, gatekeepers, don't lose your first love. Don't lose your first love. The body of Christ needs you. The community needs you. The, your nation needs you. There are so many oppositions and so many things. And sometimes we don't say, you know, you don't get the thanks and the appreciation that you get, but that you need. But remember who you're working for. You're working for the master and he will reward you in his own time. 
So I want to say to the intercessors, now, when you are interceding on behalf of somebody, it is very vital. Here's something that I want to say to you. A lot of times, some of you have got discouraged because you've gotten hits. You pray for someone and something happened to you. The hell break loose in your house and you couldn't understand it. Every time you pray and somebody got a healing, something terrible happened. Hell came after you and you didn't know what to do. I want to say, I want to give you some, some words of encouragement here. I want to give you some very vital information. As an intercessor, you must cover yourself. Before you start to pray, you must cover yourself. How do we cover ourselves before we go in? Because when you're praying as an intercessor or gatekeeper, you're going into the war zone. You're going where grenades, you actually entering into the spirit realm into a war zone that is already taking place. And so I want to say to you, when before you go in, you cover yourself. How do you cover yourself? Father, I put on my whole armor. I'm putting on my helmet of salvation that I may be able to withstand against the enemy. I'm covering my, we're putting on the breastplate of righteousness. You begin to put on the whole armor. I have the shield of faith that I can withstand the darts of any enemy. I have the sword of the spirit of the word of God. I have my feet shod with the gospel of peace. And I have my belt of truth. Understand, when you put on the whole armor of God, Paul tells us we can stand. And having done all to stand, to still stand. A lot of intercessors and a lot of prayer, a lot of prayer warriors have gone into battle and I've seen a lot of wounded soldiers because they simply did not know or understand the importance of covering themselves. And if you don't cover yourself, then Satan goes after your children. So I want to encourage you because in this season, the warfare is heightened. Satan is now shooting to kill. He's now trying to take up because he knows that people are now trying to rededicate their lives. I saw, I saw Satan setting up snares. There were traps being set up. As God is getting ready and slowly releasing us back into the communities, Satan is setting up snares and traps. The Bible talk about the foul snare, the snare, the cage, where when we go here, this is what's going to happen. We might end up getting in a place of where, God forbid, things can happen. Wheelchair. We can end up um, losing our lives. Satan is setting up traps. But the Lord God Jehovah that has kept you this far will not allow you to be ignorant to the devices of the enemy. So I want to say to you, make sure, intercessors, that before you start to pray on behalf of people, before you start to intercede on behalf of your community, your family, your city, your nation, whatever God is asking you, always put on your spiritual armor. Don't go into battle without your spiritual armor. You can get hurt. You can get discouraged. And because you need to understand that there is a spiritual warfare that is going on. Not only... When you're done and you're finished, you, you come out of your prayer, you cover yourself again. Lord, I thank you, God, for this time of prayer. I thank you that you are my rear guard. I thank you for goodness and mercy that is following me. I thank you, Lord God, that you are covering me with, um, yeah, I don't fight against flesh and blood, but I'm having, I have on my spiritual armor. And Lord, now as I'm about, I'm about to end this prayer, I thank you for your covering. I thank you for keeping my family safe. Put a hedge of protection around them. You better begin to pray for your children, your spouse, your job, your finances, your vehicles, everything connected to you. You want to make sure that you have them safe and covered. Remember back in the day, they had walls around the city so no enemy can get in. They protected themselves from the robbers and the thieves. You have to protect yourself from the robber and the thief. We know what Satan is. He comes to do three things, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So when you would have prayed for others, then Satan will come and try to discourage you. As an intercessor, you need to understand spiritual warfare. There is a spirit world, and the warfare is, let me tell you, whether you fight or not, Satan is fighting you. You don't have to fight. You are still being fought. And that's why every day, every once a month, you write back in the hospital. And sometimes we feel like, oh my God, the enemy mad. Uh, he is mad with me because uh, I see every time I try to pray, I mean, no, that means you're being defeated. And that means that you need to up the ante because the enemy have no power over a child of God. If you are walking with God, he gives you power. He gives you power and authority over devils and demons. He gives you power and authority over sickness. He gives you power and authority over poverty and lack. He gives you the wisdom 
and the to do and how to do and how to walk. And so spiritual warfare don't look like spiritual warfare. What it looks like, you'll be so tired. Have you ever been so tired you're trying to sleep and you did not know why the sleepiness come on you? And you've been saying, Lord, I really need to get back to prayer like how I was. And you're trying your best to get back to prayer like how you were, how you were praying, but it was just so hard for you to do. That's spiritual warfare. You might think you're tired. Spiritual warfare, Satan is so crafty and subtle that he makes it look like it's a part of your normal life but it's, he's actually fighting you behind the scene. Spiritual warfare is you trying to worship and you trying to worship and you trying to figure, Lord, what happened? Oh, I feel so dry. Oh my God, I have a mind battles. You don't want nobody to know that. You don't want nobody to know that you're struggling. And so what we do, you are the best candidate for the enemy because you know what? You're afraid to talk about what's going on. You're afraid to share your testimony about how you've been defeated. And so you know what happened? Satan keeps defeating you. And you live in defeat and you become accustomed to it. No more child of God. You have the power of the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. Jesus, 10 days and 30, and the, uh, no, uh, May 31st is Pentecost Sunday. Mm. That's when Jesus sent the power for us as children of God to walk in. Activate that power that's on the inside of you and tell the devil no more. Tell the devil that you are not going to take it no more. All the ruckus and the carrying on that is in your house, every night you go home, you can't sleep because all of the noise and the war that's carrying on, child of God, take authority. It's only a smoke screen. It's the enemy trying to discourage you and to shut your mouth. He's trying to stop you from decreeing because every time you decree and declare, you're getting closer to your miracle. Every time you decree and declare, somebody's chains are being broken. Every time you decree and declare, somebody's raising up out of the sick bed. Every time you decree and declare, God is doing something in the earth realm. I want you to know today that you are powerful because the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you and no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Did you hear what I say? No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. So don't worry about witches and warlock and what they're trying to do. They can't prosper. That's only talk. They can't do nothing to a child of God. Understand your authority in the earth realm. As a matter of fact, they're more afraid of you than you are of them. Child of God, spiritual warfare is real. And some of you are in the battle right now. Some of you are having mind battles, but you don't want to talk about it. But I pray today by the power of the Holy Ghost that you as an intercessor be released because you're fought in your mind. Because God has to give you visions. He gives you visions. You're watchmen. So your spiritual eye, you will start to look with the natural eye. And the enemy will have you so focused seeing things with your natural eye that you won't be able to see things in the spirit. He will have you so distracted. But today, child of God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I decree and declare that your eyes, you will have eyes like eagle. You will see the enemy coming from afar off. I pray today that wherever, I don't care where you are on today, I don't care how depressed, how down you are, it doesn't matter about but earth's economy because we are kingdom scared. We live according to the kingdom. That means if, we are, if our father is a king, we are queens. And because we are queens, we have an inheritance. You have to know who you are. Access the power. Access what is needed. The Bible said the cattle on the thousand hill belongs to him. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Don't you know that you have access? God will always provide. I have never seen anyone in the Bible who God has chosen to do a work and they were poor and distressed and they were miserable. They always had what they need. Wherever God guides, he will provide. Child of God, wipe your tears. You will not have to cry anymore. Child of God, don't be discouraged. The battle is the belongs to the Lord. Vengeance belongs to the Lord. Let go of those people that hurt you. Those that persecuted you, those that lied on you, you are an intercessor, a gatekeeper, and God is depending on you. Before the foundation of the world, uh, before the foundation of the world, he called you from your mother's womb to intercede and to pray. Prayer to me is the most powerful ministry in the church. Without prayer, the church won't function. The prayer is the engine to any ministry. The prayer is the engine to any ministry. We can't make it without the prayer ministry. We can't make it without you intercessors. We can't make it because we're not going to see everything. I, I can't see everything. But God will allow you to have 
the eyesight, the hindsight. He will allow you to have the insight. He will give you eyes like eagle to be able to see the enemy coming from afar. God is getting ready to blow a fresh breath upon you. And sevenfold means completion. Arise, travailing daughters of Zion. Arise and take up your spot. Don't give up. Don't slack your riding. Get on that horse and begin to ride. The woman, the Shunammite woman, when her son died, she didn't stop to talk. She didn't decree and say, oh my God, my son died, the man of God lied. That woman got on that horse, she did not slap her right, and she went to the man of God, and the Lord restored her son that day. Get, do not slack your riding, children of God, because God is depending on you. We are depending on you. I am depending on you, because the prayers of the righteous still avail much. Listen to me, child of God. I want to say to you, and I'm getting ready to get done, because I want to be obedient. I want to give you a charge. I want to say to you today, let me tell you, you are more powerful than you think. Today, according to Ezekiel 22 and 30, so I sought for a woman among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land <laughs> that I should not destroy it. But I found no one. God has sought among the land and you said yes. And because you said yes, God has given you great divine favor. I want you to know today that you matter. I want you to know today that you are powerful. So you might have been thinking about quitting the prayer to you. You might have been thinking about saying, well, you know, or you might have just been tipsing through the, you know, tipsing and you half in and half out. I want to encourage you. You are important. We need you. We need your input. We need to know that you're praying. We need to, your visions and your dreams. We need you, to, when you open your mouth, something happens. There's a, a voice, a noise that goes and it causes demons to tremble. You might not be able to see it in the spirit realm, but if God can show you what happens in the spirit realm, when you open your mouth and pray, you'll pray all the time. So when Paul tells us to pray without ceasing, it don't mean we must get on our knees and pray. You could pray in your car. You could pray anywhere. You could pray while you're cooking. You could pray while you're on the job and you go to use the restroom. You could just pray. That's pray without ceasing. Just talking to the Lord every moment you have. Talking to the Lord. I want to say to you, be sincere in your prayer and always pursue holiness. Remember, our bodies are the temple of the Lord. And God is respecting, expecting that you would speak to the people, speak to him on behalf of those persons that cannot speak for themselves. <laughs> I want you to know that according, again, hold to the key. Hold on to the key that God has given you. This is the Michal of God. Remember, you have been given a key. When you are confronted with powers, you bind them up. When you are confronted with evil entities, you bind them up. Bind and cast out. Because he's giving the powers to you. You are called to be the ones that are going to help to pray us through. Praying people, families, nation. I don't want to say to somebody, somebody's been praying for their son. And your son, it seems like all hope is lost. That's a child of destiny. Don't stop praying. Don't give up. Don't stop praying for that family member that you're praying for. Someone is praying for healing. Don't stop praying for that healing. God is hearing you. Don't stop praying for your miracle. I'm encouraging you. I, I'm encouraging you tonight, women of God, travailing daughters of Zion, to continue to travail. And I'm going to leave with you the scripture. The Bible says in Isaiah, shall I bring you to this place of birth and leave you? No, it's time for you to birth. It's time for you to bring forth. He said, you shall bring forth and it shall be a male child. I will bring you to this place, but you will give birth. So as we are giving birth to this new dimension in our prayer, that means when you begin to pray and when you come together as intercessors and gatekeepers, <laughs> something supernatural is going to happen. The spirit of the Lord is going to take over and God is going to have his way and shackles and chains, and you'll begin to see miracles. This is the season of miracles. This is the season of blind eyes opening. 
This is the season of the dead being raised. This is the season where God is entrusting because he wants to prove his power in the earth realm. And he has chosen you. Yes, you. He has chosen you to be that ambassador, to be that person that will speak on behalf. So God bless you, wonderful and mighty women of God. Again, I'm so humbled to be able to share with you and to be able to just encourage you on how powerful and wonderful you are. And please, mighty women of God, when you pray, please remember Sherilyn in your prayer because I do need the prayer of the righteous. I honor those that are standing in the gap. Those that are standing and interceding is not an easy job because when you pray people through, they walk away, they talk about you, they persecute you, they laugh at you, they do all manner of things. But you have to remain focused and remember that God will reward you. I pray that you guys have an amazing evening. Thank you once again, Pastor Hinsey. And please, I thank God for Pastor um, Alonso Hinsey as well. Thank God for you guys just inviting me and allowing me to be a part of this awesome move. I am so grateful. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Thank you. Don't, don't go, Apostle. Well, first, first thing, we have one male in the group. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Oh my God. I was looking, I was looking earlier and I didn't see. Everyone. I told him I, I told him that's what happened when you're late. So <laughs> so you 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 heard me mention my 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 eldest son. Uh, this is my second son. Um, oh. you know, I what I what I thank God for is seasons change. You know, um, my other son brought me much pain. Uh, he's still in my life, but God birthed a, a an intercessor and 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 just sent him uh, to to me. He is actually in his final year at Taylor University. Awesome. So, so Jamal. Jamal comes, Jamal helps out on our praise team. Jamal, uh, he's actually in Georgia right now, um, preparing to do a, um, uh, an internship, but, uh, just wanted to, you to know that there was one male on the team. <laughs> oh my God. Jamal, please accept my apology. When I looked through the list, I saw, I said, okay, there's only woman here. I said, okay, so I'm good. I can just speak to the women. So I, I do apologize. Mighty man of God, you also can push and bring forth. God bless you. Please don't hold it to the charge. God bless you. Okay. Does anyone have a question? Um, and and listen, this is, this is, I have intentionally, uh, and I, I, I don't think it's coincidence that, that the Lord had me to bring apostle on i have never ever in all my life met a person of god that is so transparent <laughs> you all think i transparent you all ain't here transparent <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> um do you have any questions do you have any concerns whether it's about you know, a stubborn situation in your life, whether it's about um, your prayer life, whatever it is, trust me when I tell you, she is a gift to the body of Christ. And so if you have a question about anything, um, this woman is well endowed, well knowledgeable, well equipped, um, any question. I When she asked if this was going to be public i said to her no because i wanted this to be a nurturing session for us because i know god is calling us um higher Amen. so any questions please don't do me don't don't do her like y'all is do pastor henzy oh my god <laughs> well hello um this is jamal <laughs> it's Hi, jamal. funny that i that i have the first question but not really a question um, I listened to you talk about the dimensions of prayer, and I know you were kind of on a time crunch, but that's one of my most favorite points that you expanded on. But what I really wanted to ask, if you would just, not really a question, but if you would share um, just kind of a cliff note version of some of the information you may have on what it looks like to enter the dimension of travail in prayer and what it looks like to tarry. Okay, that's a very good question. <clears throat> now, there, of course, 
if we are topping at the beginning where we talk about the acts, when we get into the interdimension, that's where the Holy Spirit takes over. Remember the Bible say, we don't know what to pray, but the Holy Spirit will, make, will pray in groaning and utterings that cannot be understood. When we get to that dimension, we are no longer in control. We are now in the spiritual realm where we are communicating with God. That takes discipline. That takes a lot of time spending with God and eating his word. So in order for us to be able to get to that place, it takes a lot of time spending. And I want to talk to you about, um, here's where it starts. It starts with a spiritual altar. Every child of God should have a place where they meet God. Every person, whether it's in your restroom, in your kitchen, a little couch, there should be a special place that you meet God. Even if it's in your car, you should always meet God at a specific time to talk with him. Jesus was our greatest example. He moved away from the disciples and he spent time with God. Moses left the people and spent time with God. So there has to be a time that you move away and you go to that place, that spiritual altar, and you spend time with God. That's how we get into that place of where we are tapping into higher levels of the spiritual realm. Because the spiritual realm is no joke now. When you get out there, that's how a lot of people have lost their minds because they go there and they don't, and that's a whole nother teaching. I don't want to open a can of worms. But you, you get, when you get into the spiritual realm, because we are spirit, we are spirit beings. We live in a body and we possess a soul. And so we have to move from glory to glory and from strength to strength. And it starts with us being first being disciplined. We have to first know who we are. We have to first understand our authority. We have to first understand that this walk is by faith. We have to go have a, we have to have a solid foundation before we can even go and tap in into that into dimension. Because when we get there, we become like John the Revelator, where he was caught up. You know, there were not many persons that you could hear talk about when they Paul was, you said, I don't know if I was a man, I was in the spirit, I was not. That takes time in prayer and that's a beautiful thing we need to get back to tarian oh god jamala remembers a little girl listen when they had those tarian service oh my god i hated them but i'm so I, I hated them then i'm so thankful to them now because don't matter how long it took for someone to receive the holy ghost or to receive the tongues they stayed the whole night now we just want people to say a simple prayer and we feel okay they got saved yeah 20 persons got saved and we okay but the Tarian service need to get back into the church so people can experience the presence of God. It's taking time because don't forget now, we have to go through all of this flesh, the veil, go beyond this flesh. It's not easy to get your mind focused on God because while you're praying, you're thinking about all sorts of things. You're thinking about your phone ringing. You're thinking about, oh my God, I forget to go to the post office. Or, oh my God, the pot on the stove. That's what happens. And so it's a discipline. It takes a lot of discipline. And discipline happens over time. It's not a one-day thing. It happens over time. And as you continue to do it, you become, you have to be consistently persistent and persistently consistent. And after a while, it becomes a habit and it becomes a part of who you are. Now, I hope that that answers your question. It did. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Um, good night, Sister Fletcher. Good night. Okay. Um, a part of when you were talking about sometimes you're sleeping late at night or the wee hours in the morning and you you know, you just get a nut sleep that sweet sleep and <laughs> <laughs> no joke you were you were waking and it's like okay um i need you to pray for so and so or somebody you you met or saw and you don't even know who the person is and you'd be like really but i don't even know who or he who she is or who he is but what what am i to pray why praying for them and like like you said you know you that sleepiness comes back on you and like, okay, yeah, I can do that when I get back up. And it happened before and it's like, it's always reoccurring. And, and it's like, sometimes you find yourself saying like, is anybody else, you know, who can pray or who will get awakened this kind of time or 
you know, why, why me? Sometimes a question you ask, like, why me? Why, why not somebody else? But, but make me so special. So, I mean, you, you really pointed out on that, but the part when you said about, you know, going back to sleep and, and you shared light on it, um, saying that you don't know who lives you could be saving. Some people die in their sleep and that's a part of disobedience as well because, hey, sometimes you go back to sleep and we all know obedience is better than sacrifice. So it, it's no coincidence that the Holy Spirit had you mention that um, to shed light on it because a lot of times it may happen and people just take it lightly. But you sharing that light on that is a serious situation because you don't know, like you said, you stand in the gap for people. Hey, sometimes persons we don't even know but if you call yourself you know interceding on behalf of people that's what it was all about and i just want to thank you for being obedient with that amen bless god so i'm right there with you sometimes i'm like are you kidding me god come on man i you know you didn't you you dreaming and you let's say you in that sweet sleep but i had to learn i I learned um i would sit up and sometimes i i stay asleep i'm honest sometimes i'm like man i can and I go right back off. I'll just say, okay, Lord, I'll lay there and start a little prayer and you drift back to sleep. But God is so patient and kind over a period of time, you become disciplined. And as you begin to yield to it, you might get it right one time and go back to doing it five times. You might get it wrong, but that's still progress. So don't despise a small beginning where it starts or where you might do it once. And don't do it again for the next three weeks. You start it. The, the point is you start it and God will continue that work on the inside of you. So now that you're hearing and saying, okay, I need to get up because it could be something that can affect us. And so in that, that's where the blessing lies. That's where your miracle might be just by praying and causing that person to be released. And it's hard because Satan don't just sit there. He comes and he finds us. Make sure we get that sweet sleep, you know, Mm -hmm. everything. You just snoring and feeling so good. (laughs) But what I do (laughs) is, I would ask the Holy Spirit. Remember, the Holy Spirit is the most important person on the earth. And really, when I ask him, I say, Holy Spirit, please, I really want to do better in my prayer. Please help me to wake up when you need me to wake up. And if I drift to sleep, I would hear a loud noise. Nobody else hear it. He would wake me up. And I would say, okay, okay, I wake, I wake, I wake, I wake. And I would just pray. And sometimes it's not that long. And it don't have to be that long. It could just be a simple prayer. Lord, I pray for this person. And I thank you, Lord. And as you begin to pray, the Lord will begin to speak to you and tell you what you need to pray. And so I, I don't don't feel bad. There are many, many persons that God has, woke, has tried to wake up and they don't get up or sometimes they do. So you're not you're not in that alone. <laughs> you're not in that alone. No, and, and you, also Christian. and also too, um when you you made you point on you made two points as far as telling us to before we intercede for anybody, you know, you cover ourselves, our homes and everything. And also when we're done, because that happened to me before, I didn't even know exactly what was happening. I, you know, someone's like, I need you to pray, pray with me. And, you know, just went and pray, rest, went into prayer with it. And then I knew it was attack afterwards. And because I hear the Holy Spirit say, not because that person tell you to pray for them. If you don't hear me really tell you to pray Very for that good. person, why, why? And he was like, and I heard the voice audibly. I didn't ask you to pray for that person. Very good. And I was like, I really thought I was like, what? I was looking around like, but aren't we supposed to pray for everybody? But it wasn't until... I actually sought the Holy Spirit out, like you said, because, yes. you know, you want to pray for everybody, but not everybody we supposed to pray for. And, and interceding, I've learned that. And yes. how you said to also cover yourself before and afterwards is a serious thing too. And also us as intercessors, praying and covering our pastors and our leaders as well is, is very important too, because after they give words and different stuff, you know, like you said, attacks come right away and it wasn't until I got attacked after praying for that person I was like okay I, I had to step back and when I say it was a serious awakening for me I was like okay yes so that's why I say everything that you were speaking on tonight was just confirmation and I just thank God for that 
and Amen. for you. Amen. And I can see you as well. And God bless you. Now, I'm glad you made that point. I want to say to everybody, you have to be careful who you pray for. You can witches come in the skies and you can be praying for them. There was a case. Anytime people ask you to pray, you ask them a little. You start asking questions. Okay, is there anything special? And you always talk about it. You, you can lose your life by praying for somebody. And so God, that's awesome. That's an awesome point. Because I remember there was one, a, a young lady I knew, she said, she went, this person came to her and said they wanted to pray for her husband. And she just felt to ask about it. She said, hold on, well, I will get back to you. Come to find out that was a sweetheart coming to ask her to pray. Yes. So, and that was not a husband. So we don't want to be, you know, because we covenant with that. And we began to pray for things that God didn't tell us to pray. Because people can pull on you. Oh, sister, so and so, child, please pray for me. You know, I tell them, no, I, I'll, I'll touch and agree. You pray. Let me hear what you pray. And so you have to be very careful because the mantle is on your life and people see that and they can cause people. That's how a lot of people get hurt, get in hospital, untimely death, children sick and all kind of things happening because we go praying for people and we don't ask questions. Like I tell the people on the prayer line, ask questions before you pray. Please intercessors, ask questions before you pray. I don't care. If it's your mom or your daddy, you're not sure, you ask questions. And if they don't want to talk, you say, okay, well, you know, I, I will continue to, I will, I, you know, I'll hear what the Holy Spirit is, is saying. You don't just run into prayer because a lot of people have gotten hurt and got injured by running into prayer like that. So thank you for that. Thank you for highlighting that. That's powerful. That's powerful. God bless you. Anyone else? Um, just another question I had. Um, I am privy to the information. Um, as Reverend Lindsay already said, um, I am a son, so we have a lot of dialogue about prayer as well as in my own spiritual journey. I was taught a lot about prayer, but I just thought for the benefit of myself and everyone on the call, if you could, you mentioned talking about um, the kind of intercessor you are. And I know that that is a loaded teaching and that's an extensive teaching, but I wanted to know if you could just, just for um, the purpose of sharing wisdom on the call um, to let everyone know, you know, how can you identify um, your realm of intercession? Because I think sometimes, as you said, a lot of us, we run with the title intercessor and we take on um, praying and we see the person with the mic and we say, oh, I want the mic. I want a chance to pray. And we run with it, but we don't understand our realm. And when we get into the realm of somebody else who we, who we, we may be styling ourselves after, we run into trouble. So I just want to ask if you could just expound on how you are able to identify your realm and how do you find the wisdom um, to sometimes tell people, no, that's not my area of intercession. You uh -huh. know, sometimes I think we are afraid to turn on, like, turn on the spotlight, that pride yes. in us, that yes. makes us not want to walk away from the platform. So if you could just talk about that a little bit, about understanding, you know, your realm of intercession. That's awesome. So that thing that we are passionate about, like for me, I'm passionate about people being delivered. So I am called to warfare. I'm a warfare intercessor. I will grab you out of hell and slap the devil and we're going to walk away. Okay, I'm not afraid to confront any powers, any evil. Um, I have grown up with persons who I didn't even know that they were witches. I was in the, in the midst of them. So if I, it, I'm not afraid. So I know my, my realm of intercession, intercession. Now, how you would know because of the passion. God, you might be a prophetic intercessor. That means that you're going to pray. God will give you the burden. When you, the area you're calling, you're going to have a burden, which is a massa in the Hebrew word or the Greek word for prayer, for whatever area it is. You might be to the place of where you are intercessor for souls. Every time you pray, you pray about souls. So the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. Now, again, and I know you might get tired of me saying this, but the Holy Spirit is the most important person on the earth. 
He is the one that gives gifts, according to 1 Corinthians 12. So if he gives the gift, he's the one that know how, he know how to distribute and tell you how to walk and activate that gift. Now, one of the things that, um, that we don't learn, here, that's a good question. When we are called as intercessors, Paul was taught by Gamaliel. Even when Paul was struck down on the road to Damascus, he went three years in, in Ephesus before he went back out into preaching. Elijah, Elisha followed him. Before Moses exited, he taught Joshua. Before Elisha exited, he taught Jehu. So there was always a matter of somebody activating the gift. Paul says, stir up the gift. There's always a shepherd or an apostolic, and your house should be apostolic. That means functioning in the five full gifts. Apostolic. There's always an apostolic activation. So that person will have that desire to pray. They might have the desire to pray. I've heard people say, I want to pray for leaders. But there's still a training and a teaching. So even though we might have this burden, we still have to put things in perspective. Jesus was not just born and he just came in and said, okay, I'm here to take over. I'm here to die for the world. No, he went through everything, waited for his time. He was taught. He used to go in the temple to teach and to be taught and listen to what the other scholars were saying. Even though he was the word, he still humbled himself. That's why when John the Baptist went to baptize him, he said, you should be baptizing me. He said, no, suffer it so to be now. I'm here on a mission. Let me fulfill that mission. I know you know who I am, but now this is the time for you. I'm coming to show you so mankind can know how to pattern after what I'm doing. So I would say to any intercessor, your foundation begins in fasting and praying and of course being taught. You must be taught the disciplinary of fasting. You must know the word of God. So even before we get to understand the realm, we have to be able to be taught. You've got to be able to want to sit at people's feet. You know, I never used to listen to Dr. Miles Mondo, God rest his soul. And when I started to listen to his videos, I was like, Jesus, man, this, this man of God has some wealth in his mouth. Man, I would sit at your feet, clean your shoes for the wealth that is in your mouth. And that's what we need to do. So even as an intercessor, and even though you feel that stirring in your belly, that don't mean you must go running and start praying and going all through it. No, you have to be taught. There are disciplines. There are the realms of the spirit where God will show you and the gift has to be activated. If I purchase a gift card out of the store, it could be $100. But if I walk at the store with that gift card, that is not activated. That's $100, but that's still value nothing because it's not activated. So when I pay for that, card that card is activated and i'm able to use it you are activated through your leaders in apostolic activation by the laying on of hands and by being taught and helping to understand your gifting that's what's lacking in the body of christ being taught the spiritual gift and being able to understand the realm of where you're calling if people don't know what they call to do how can they operate listen i've been a victim of so much when people when i went to the church they said well you can sing now i know i can't sing man then you can sing. All of a sudden, the next week, literally, I was on the prayer stand. Listen to me. I was promiscuous. I had a problem with the sheep. I could not stay. I couldn't keep them out of my bed. How in the world you can tell me I'm a youth leader and I'm preaching up there, preaching and, and prophesying to people? I felt so crappy. But did they, did they tell me? No, they didn't tell me because they didn't understand activation. And there are many persons that don't know, even though they have the gift, they're still trying to find out who they are. I want to know my purpose. And when you don't know your purpose, you are lost soul. I'm going to put it like Dr. Mousman will put it. He said, every person was born to solve a problem on the earth. When you find that problem that you were called to, to solve, purpose begins. <laughs> you can be the richest person because you are called to solve a problem. So activation, not only activation, but you have to also walk in demonstration. So be thought the theory part of it, the practical part of it, sit and learn. So I believe that people need to be equipped before they even get to understanding the level. They need to understand. First, they need a life of prayer. So don't, I wouldn't even worry about what level I'm called to right now because first you need, do you pray? Do you, do you even have a prayer line? Do you even know any prayer scripture? Can you quote a whole scripture for me in prayer? You know, these are the type of the things and not 
not to belittle anyone, but I was ashamed. Listen, my spiritual mother, she came on the line one time, said, okay, you passed us. I want you to quote 10 scriptures fully. And we couldn't do it. I was ashamed. I said, oh my God. Because, you know, we go, no weapon form against me shall prosper. Okay, what's the rest of that scripture? We repeat clause A, but don't, don't say clause B. Or oh, we do clause B and don't say clause A. Knowing the word of God. So my advice to any of you, if you are stirred up with the gift, whatever it is that you, God will give you that passion. Passion is what it is. I have passion for souls. I want to see souls saved and set free and delivered. That's my passion. I don't like to see people hurting. I like to speak people to be able to be free. That's why I'm transparent and I don't care. I'll tell you everything about me. As a matter of fact, one of my bishop friends, he called me before I came on and he's like, girl, you let me read a piece of that book. I need to read the rest of that book. How you to leave me hanging like that? Oh, that's a juicy story. I said, well, so that means I have to purchase the book. Eh? Sounds like, but because he's like, man, that could help so many people. Not many people are transparent. First of all, if you're going to be an intercessor, you got to be able to be allowed the Holy Spirit to deal with you and to set you free from all the things that hinders you. Because if you're not free, then what's going to happen is the enemy is going to continue to accuse you. So even though people are getting victory, you're still in the cage because you have not dealt with that thing or that those things that has is, 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 is set you back. Because, you know, it's hard for us to tell people, hey, I have a pornography problem. Hey, I have a sex problem. It's hard for us to say those things. Let's be honest. And the church have made it that way. We made it hard for people to be free to speak about the things that they're going through. So I want to submit to you, the first thing we need to do is to first, we got to learn what is prayer first. We got to learn what we need to do first. But the passion, God placed a passion on the inside of you for the levels. There are many levels. You could be called to pray for government. You could be called in the prophetic. You could be called for souls. You could be called to pray for people that are sick. You could be called to be the head of group intercessory. You could be called for those pressing the crowd for mercy for your country, your nation. There are many different levels of intercessory, but the foundation remains the same for everyone that is going or walking into ministry. I pray that, um, you know, that, that answers. I love your question, Jamal. I believe you're doing this because I, I, uh, I didn't recognize you. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. <laughs> Wow. I also say, are you doing this because you? <laughs> <laughs> no, Please. man. It's because I, I, I can tell that she is a well of information, and I'm trying to soak up as much as I could get. If y'all leave it up to me, we'll be here all night. So somebody start <laughs> asking questions. <laughs> oh God! I praise God. I, I have a question. Good night. Um, Good night, yes, ma'am. Fletcher. Okay, thank you for the information. I mean, I could be here all night just sitting and, and listening to you. But you speak about um, when you go in prayer, before you pray, you should cover yourself. Um, but I know that is something which I don't normally do. You're so busy praying for other people and things that are going on around you, and you forget to cover yourself. and when you come out of prayer, you feel like you was fighting with the enemy. Mm -hmm. I know you just cover with that because you're not covering yourself. <laughs> so now that I know, and then you, you also speak about, um, be careful who you pray for because you, you, you speak about the sweet art and, and all of that. So my question to you is, how do you decipher between spirit of discernment or just using wisdom? How do you tell the difference well i should use my wisdom just use good wisdom or or you know yes ma'am i pray for this person well the good the good part about it that's an excellent well, question before, before you answer sound like sound like we need a teaching of the senses the spiritual <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly you know is this a spirit of discernment or this just or i just need to use wisdom before i get into this or before i start praying and, and you know, you said you, you, you need to seek God. You, you know, you seek God, but sometimes you, you get put on the spot. You need to yes. pray now or you pray later. What, what do you do? In well, like that? yes. Don't let no one rush you. Don't let no one make you feel like there are cases an emergency because you're not God. So you, you, you take the time. If they can't wait on you, then, you know, they can quietly go away. 
because the thing about it is when when they're home sleeping, you in the night can't sleep, your body hurting, something is happening. So discernment, listen to this. The one of the key things to discernment is listening. Hear when you listen carefully, you will hear what they're saying. You will hear sometimes the devil talking through them. Sometimes you will hear the snakes in their in the words. Woman of God, listen to me. This, let me give you an example. Woman of God, how you doing today? Oh, woman of God, I'm so grateful and thank God for your life, man. You're such a mighty woman of God. You could pray, Lord, I, I really need to pray today. I really, I, it's an emergency. Oh my God, I, I just going through so much. Everything is going wrong. I don't understand. I've been praying and talking to God and they just go pop. Blah, 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 blah. And you get all excited because you want to help and you just start praying. But you listen in the midst of that. Listen and how they come with that deceptive voice. And not all the time it's deception. Woman of God. No, you take, as they're speaking, you take the time. And as they're speaking, remember, the Holy Spirit is the most important person on the earth. You speak to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, while they're talking, do I pray? What do I do? And trust me, he will never, ever make you ashamed. He will begin to show you and you just take your time. And even if you start praying, sometimes I'll start praying for people and I'll stop in the midst and I'll say, hold up. Let me ask you a question. What's going on there? You see? And I stop in the midst. And when you come to find out, you're finding out that it's not really what they say. Just like sometimes I would talk to a person and they'll be saying, oh, my husband, this and my husband, that. But when I approach them, they say, yeah, you're right. And I wasn't really, really doing. I was, it was really some of my fault too. So it is important. It's your life, woman of God. It's not only your life. What affects you affects your household, affects your children and your children's children. So you got to think, okay, if I make this decision, this ain't just about me. This going to affect everybody that's connected to me. So you just got to say to the person, hey, um, let me get back with you. Is it okay? Just give me a moment. Let me get back with you. I don't care how urgent they make it sound. You tell them, let me give, give me five minutes or 10 minutes. I'm going to call you back. Or if you put on the spot, you just tell them, hold on. Just give me a minute. Okay. Just start, as you start asking questions, the Holy Spirit will open up the windows and open up the doors and begin to show you. Let me tell you, he is so powerful. He will never allow you to walk into a trap. So if you trust them, woman of God, when they come, you'll see. Because as an intercessor, your eyes will begin to adjust. And you'll see the devil coming. You will hear them. You'll be so sensitive in the spirit realm that when they come and ask you to pray, you, you'll you say, well, you know, um, I, I hear you. Okay, woman of God, I hear you. So, I, you know, I, I'll pray with you. You know, I'll pray with you. And you don't have to pray for them now. That's so bad if they feel bad. You know, that ain't about it. This is about your life. This is about you. And when you go on behalf of God, the devil coming for you. They ain't going to that person because you decided to go before God on behalf of that person. Remember Achan? Achan yep. decided to steal. And everybody suffered because of that sin. So you don't want to be covenant. Because you have to be careful. Even when we go sit down with friends, we have to be careful who we have a lunch with. Because don't you know that if you sit down with somebody, you are you could be initiated into the witch into the witch covenant. There are many persons that are initiated into the witch covenant and don't know. Even if you agreement is so serious and Satan is so subtle about agreement, sitting and eating people food, you know we we like our belly. I love my kung sala, and they know. Give me kung sala, and I'm good. So you could be sitting. And, and you could be eating a person's food and not knowing that you initiated right in the cupboard. They have to positive right in you and all of a sudden your prayer life goes down and you're that open for tax and you're trying to figure out. You go into the doctor and the doctor says, but there's nothing wrong with you. You say, but man, you trying to tell me nothing wrong with me because you've been attacked spiritually. So as spiritual gatekeepers and as intercessors, hear me well. Don't let nobody rush you and tell you it's an emergency. If it's that serious, then they need to go straight to God because he's always hearing Okay, so that's a that's a very very powerful question. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good night. Stop. I want to ask a question, and yes, I want to thank you, Apostle. That's Apostle the, the for your point too, because I I I, I, oh. I can say that. Go ahead. I think I hear Deacon Winters go, go talking. Ahead. Go ahead, Deacon Winters. Uh, uh, Evangelist T will go after you. 
No, I was I was saying that it was a good point that um, Sister Ramin raised because in reference to you know people coming to you and asking you to pray for them. You done? And I know that I'm guilty of it. <laughs> Um, sometimes because you, you know, just want to help the person and you know, you don't consult to say, can you hear me? Okay, I, I will pass because my internet is breaking Our internet is breaking up, so. Okay. Um, Evangelist Roll, you want to go ahead? Okay, good night, uh, Apostle Fletcher. I want to thank you for your wealth of knowledge and the word of wisdom that is resting so heavily upon you. I'm like uh, Minister Jamal, where I could pull all night. <laughs> I can have a thousand questions, but I say, Lord, I know they say when I get started. But what I want to um, say to you, I'm sort of like one of those people, like dreamers and a seer, prophetic seer. And I'm telling you, I'm at the point now where my warfare has taken has is more taking place like in the in my dreams. Because I know the enemy doesn't want me to, you know, see or, or have some type of knowledge of what the Lord is revealing to me so that I can, you know, war on behalf of it. But I know you're talking about covering and and and, and stuff. So my thing is, I literally, I know I'm asleep, but I know my subconscious is up because I, I'm warring in the night and I'd be like, I'm warring. Sometimes my husband even telling me I'm moving around and sometimes I might be speaking in tongues in the night, but I sleep in. But um, I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to figure out where you say covering. I know, okay, yeah, I can pray that. Um, Ephesians 6 over my mind in the night and I can you know ask the Lord to guide my mind and 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 whatever um but what what else could I press into to like I don't know I'm, I'm trying to and I'm t and since this COVID thing that's like the way the enemy has been um attacking me like sort of like in in the dreams like okay, mm -hmm. okay so that's awesome now, first, I want to ask you: Do you do you document your dreams? Do you write yes. them down? Awesome. Write mm -hmm. them down, date them, keep mm -hmm. them. So that means that there's an opening that he has access to come in your dreams. So you have the right. The Bible say, "When men sleep, evil men come and sow tears." So you got to begin to pray against the dream pollution. You got to begin to pray and pull it down. You got to begin to pray against every attack in your dream. In your sleep. Yes. See, now, the way I pray, I pray differently. I pray prayer points. I've been trained by and, um, the Africans. They, you know, I have spiritual fathers, spiritual brothers. They all Africans. And so they taught me to pray. I used to pray, you know, look, plenty. But when I learn how to pray those prayer points, listen, my life changed. Okay? And so you have where the enemy comes because he knows that you dream. He's attacking your dream. So you have to now warfare don't warfare in the spirit but warfare in the natural and you begin to say okay every power that is coming to pollute my dream tonight i curse you by the power of the holy ghost you will not come in my dream satan i give you no right you have to speak with authority i bind you devils that are coming and tormenting me in my dream in the mighty name of jesus because he know he can't get you while you wait and as you begin to speak to him before you take your bed anoint your head anoint the bottom of your feet, anoint your hands. And as you begin to anoint your pillow and you lay there, and here's a good thing. When um, um, I can send, Pastor Hinsey has a lot of the, I always encourage all of the persons on the prayer line. There is um, this thing on YouTube with the scripture that plays. Not not anyone now. The ones that have, it, it, it looks like, you know, it have Psalms 31 for protection, eight hours. Play mm -hmm. those Psalms. Play them because your spirit man is alive. Don't forget your spirit. So what Satan is doing is playing with your spirit while you're sleeping. So you need to pray those scriptures. Or if you're, you're interested in learning about the prayer point, put on the prayer point because they're warfare prayer points. 
And as you're doing that, I promise you, you will sleep in peace. Your house will be in peace. Everything that is turned up, you have to have the atmosphere charged. But I always tell people, always feed your spirit the word of God when you're sleeping. When you get up, you feel so refreshed and renewed. So Satan is trying to defeat you because if he defeats you in the dream, he could get you. That means it will manifest in the natural. Don't forget your spirit. Everything you are now has already happened in the spirit. And this is just a manifestation in the natural. So you need to deal with him in the natural. So when he comes in your dream, you let him know that he has no power and no authority. You begin to speak over your mind. You begin to speak over the atmosphere because you're not supposed to be worrying in your sleep. He is, there's an open and a portal. And so you have to understand sometimes because my grandfather, he used to read palms. I didn't know that that was not good. That was evil. I could read palms. So I wouldn't look in person's palm because I know that's automatic for me. And so sometimes we have people who have witchcraft backgrounds in our family, people who are, who are, um, who've been in, in divination in our family. And because of that, that could be an opening because someone in your family could have been dabbling in the witchcraft and you were supposed to be the person that takes over. And because you're not taking over, Satan is messing with you in your dreams. They're pissed that you have not taken the seat and you're praying and they realize that, okay, in the day we can't get up. Don't forget, all the Satan work is done in the night when you're sleeping. The Bible say what? Every day you wake up, you're counted as a sheep for slaughter. Every day he's planning your demise and what he's going to do. So now you got to begin to ask God to show you the portals, show you what it is that what's open in the spirit realm that has given Satan access to your dreams. Because he has access and that access has to be identified and then shut down and sealed with the blood of Jesus. And once you identify that access, he has no more power and he'll have to leave. So that's, that's, I, I hope that helps. Yeah. Thank you. God bless. Amen. Okay. We got to wrap up. I, I, I promise apostle one hour. It's, I think it's a couple minutes <laughs> to 10. Mary, do you have a question? Eight? Listen, listen. <laughs> apostle. You have to come back, Pastor Mo, this uh, encore, Pastor Fletcher. You, listen, you on it. You in the spirit. The reason why. Awesome. I, I, awesome. Listen, this, this lady is one of the ladies I want to recruit for the prayer line. I tell her, <laughs> right? She ain't never get back to me, so I left. <laughs> <her show. laughs> this this she, this one is a financial. I don't know. She's between a financial and, 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 and Kiki. I, I, she's a Ooh, Listen, yes. you talking about Africans, I was taught by Dr. Alukoya. Okay. okay. So the whole thing of warfare, I know about it. A, a lot of persons, like I was telling them, a lot of, I don't know. I wouldn't say I wouldn't know, but I, I, Back then, I didn't know exactly my calling, so to speak. Everyone was like always drawn to me to either pray or to just be the vocal one, getting it done. And the same thing what you said, a lot of persons dip and dab. They have lotions, potions on them. And I always had that sense like, you know, what is that? And nobody would smell it or see it or feel it. And I'd be like, so is, I, am I the crazy one? And then, like, I say that in my spirit. And the person who have the lotion and potion and everything on them would look at me. And I, I like, 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 could see, like, snake eyes. And, like, they look at me and I could just light right up. And I'd be like, whoa. And I, I never could understand what I was dealing with. And tell you, like you said, dealing with the Africans and, and studying and getting to know exactly what it is. So uh, that's why I said a lot of persons, when they talking about they going to pray for somebody and that hole in the hands or this one want to anoint you to pray for you. And, and you talking about sitting down and having meals with people, not knowing that you making covenants with these people. You, I can tell you, you just hit everything because Every person will come to you, they disguise themselves. Remember now, the devil disguises himself as the angel of light. 
and they yeah. come like this, your friend, they prefer in you and you signing your life away and don't even know. You see a person who was fine this week, next week you see them skinny and you don't know what's going on. One month they barely swollen, like they ready to give birth. Then the next the next week they they slim, then you see it again. So these abnormal things people see it as normal but then we know that that is not normal and they just i don't i don't know but how you say it in with the africans oh my god i just thank god for you tonight i just thank him for you tonight jesus have you met dr olokoya <laughs> yes yes and, and evangelist Rose was talking about about her dream life and i used to get those too and only thing what really did it for me also, besides anointing myself, is when I have these things, because, you know, you your dreams, it, it manifests in your dreams first. And if you don't cancel it, it becomes manifest um, 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 in the physical, because everything starts yeah. in your dream life first. And when I started um, being on this teaching, and I was like, okay, because sometimes I just used to like, you know, just brush the dreams aside and just didn't bother with it. Not casting it down and sending the fire God and the blood of Jesus Christ into my dream life, you know, to roast up everything that's not of God. And when I started doing that, then things started, you know, working itself out until I started studying and knowing that everything starts within the, the spiritual, spiritual person before yes. it comes manifest physical. So, if those like nightmares and stuff, because that is not of God. So once you get in those nightmares and then you know that's the enemy right there. So, so past evangelist Tia ain't the only one who was getting that. And so that's what I'm saying. When I heard, I was like, look at God. Look at God <laughs> just showing exactly the same thing I was going through. So when I was experiencing that too, I the Holy Spirit said, now send the fire of God and the blood of Jesus into your dream life. You know, to burn up and roast up everything that is not of God so it would not manifest. And you cancel that right there and then. So it wouldn't manifest. So I just I just thank you for that too. But yeah, like you said, the the Africans, oh my God, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I um his spiritual daughter, Dr. Stella Emmanuel. I don't know if you know her. That's yes, um, yes, yes. So that's who uh, that's who I sat and then learned. Um and um I have um one of my spiritual mentor, he's in South Africa. He wrote the book, um, Church Mafia. Um, and so I learn a lot um, from so many persons because you call, when you call the warfare, you've got to always be alert. And that's what you call to do because you're bold. You know, you, you don't, you're scared, you go right straight in hell and walk right there halfway and then pull them out and tell them, let's go. You know, so... When your head was bucking the world, and that's what y'all say, your head got to be bucking the spiritual realm too. <laughs> so you got to have a buck, you got to walk like you buck, you buck your head, you know, and that's that's what it's going to take. So that's powerful. That's powerful. So many people are being tormented and don't know. And so many people are oblivious to what is happening. There are persons that are having dreams and they're having their, their, they feel like someone is bothering them or someone is actually having intimacy with them, not knowing. That's a whole nother teaching, not understanding. There are many persons that are tormented and can't talk about it. And that's what God, that's my passion, revealing and eradicating the kingdom of darkness, revealing that old scoundrel so God's people can be free. So thank you so much. That's awesome to know that somebody understands what I'm talking about, the prayer point. So turn evangelists on to that. There, Dr. Daniel Olokoya has a seven night midnight cry. Yes, Honey, yes, if you say that. Sister, everything that is connected um, to hell. Um, 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 evangelist Rossi. Me. Got all the tools and the equipment. Oh Lord! Uh, this woman, this woman sat at the feet of Miles Monroe for many years. She oh sat the, Lord! She sat at the feet of Ben, uh, Apostle Ben Smith for many years. Trust me, she got she 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 equipped. She equipped. She probably just wanted your recommendation of how she, you know, the 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 the, the enemy comes and his attacks. You know, changes. He changes, changes. Strat, even though they're continuously, you know, they're not new, but he changes them up. So she probably just, but 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 I'm sure, I'm sure she have 
You have prayer rain? Yeah, I, I have them all. <laughs> yeah, she, she, she have them all. I, I have plenty. I do I do be reading the prayer points. Uh I just meant to say now on that note, Apostle Fletcher, uh, do you have books? <laughs> I I have books, but my books are not prayer books. I my books are um I I wrote books, but these books are like my personal testimony where I got delivered from the book from the incubus and succubus. That's me being a pastor. Okay. And the latest book I wrote was Why Did You Marry Me? Talking about my marriages. And trust me, my book is very transparent. So if you want them, and that's the <laughs> book. <for me. laughs> and, um, <laughs> and so I do have a book for new converts. It's, it's called um, I'm Saved Now What? And then book for persons who are dealing with a lot of voices in their head. So those voices make them stop. stop. So those are the books I've written. But I have so many other books that I want to write because I, I deal in the era of deliverance. That's okay. what God has called me to deliverance. God's people needs to be set free, you know? And so my books comes there. I'm bringing out the manual to go with them. So they don't just be a read, but you can actually have groups and go through them and learn because sometimes we marrying the wrong people and be wretched. We sorry. We ask God for a man. Okay. That's a whole nother topic. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, I can let you go right now, but you touched on something. Oh, Lord. Um, so many Christians are now dealing with, the, with, with anxiety and mental, mental yes. mind battles and mental attack. Yes. And, and so often we don't talk about it. Uh-huh. Um, I think getting connected to you and hearing you, you gave me a whole new revelation when you began to touch on how, you know, the root of some of these things. And I know it's unfair to ask you to speak, say that in two to three minutes. More, but I, I, I need you to just touch on how these mental and mind battles and anxiety and 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 how all of these are different methods and 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 and. That, that the enemy uses, but they are stemmed from other things. You were yes. doing, a, oh, you did an awesome, that was yesterday or day before yesterday when you did an awesome teaching, but you all ain't recorded. <laughs> we didn't, oh man. <laughs> That's what I'm speaking for. <laughs> okay. Um, we must remember that the battlefield is in the mind. That's where Satan fights us. Um, we have two. We have the subconscious and the conscious. The conscious mind is where all the data, area, day-to-day living, all of that is taken in, and then it's processed and put in the subconscious where you don't have access. So you don't know what's there. And so Satan will fill your mind. Your mind is filled with files, with rejection, files with rebellion, files with, you know, with the things that you might have been in a place of where... Um, you are molested. All of that gives Satan access to your mind. And so what he does is, let's say from the time of conception, your mother said, I wanted a boy, and you were a girl. Rejection was attached to you. That's why people think that persons are born as homosexual. They're not born there. That's the spirit that attaches itself to that child. And, and so when the child is born, the spirit attached. But if you tell the spirit to go, if someone knows what they're doing, that person can receive deliverance. And so people are in their mind because they don't know their rights. And so they, rejection is one of the main sin. Everyone, the main thing that has happened, every one of us has been rejected. And when the door of rejection opens, it births rebellion, it births anger, it births pain, and it births murder, and it keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. And so you feel insecure. You feel you're not good enough. You know, and you have spirits that are religion who will tell you that, oh, child, I know your story. You she shouldn't be up there preaching. So it makes you feel in a place, and it, the tapes keep playing back in your mind of all you did, all the clubbing, all the drinking, you know, all what you did under the sheets. And that's how Satan began to build mental notes. And what he does, because we don't understand our right as a child of God, it becomes a tool and he keeps on playing that tape and we, we don't forgive ourselves and we feel guilty and we feel ashamed and we're in a place of where now he has access because we even though Christ forgive us, we don't believe, we don't even, we don't even believe that he forgive us and we can't forgive ourselves. So there are a lot of persons that are suffering mentally, 
not because they can't be free, but they believe the lies of the enemy. Satan is the same little snake, now a dragon, who deceived Eve. He told Eve, you sure God said that? And he's saying to you, you sure you him? Mind you, you just bent back and the doctor said he, something was there. Instead of you believing the report of the Lord, you believe his lies. So it's a matter of him lying to you and you believing his lies. And that's why it's important to know the word of God. Remember now, he came to Jesus. And if he could come to Jesus, the son of God, and he said, hey, if you be the son of God, turn these stones to rock the bread. What insolence. Who is he to come to the holy son of God? But he did. And he comes to you and he makes you feel, look at you, you praying and doing all this speaking and tongue and you ain't got dollar to catch the bus. And you start to take that in and you start to believe it. And you know what happens? After a while, people break down by the pressure because they don't know how to release and they don't understand the things that is happening to them. And a lot of people break down mentally. Now, one of the things God called me for is persons who are mind battles. And Lord, that's a difficult task because it's a, a confirmation, constantly repeating and helping them to understand the ways of God. And so if Satan is able to tap into your mind and able to plant those negative seeds and evil deposit there, that's how people have a lot of mental breakdown, believing the lies, simply believing the lies and the deception of Satan himself. So it's important to know the word so you can declare the word of God over your life and over your situation. Thank you so much. So, <laughs> Mel, stay on for us. <laughs> Thank you so much, Apostle. Um, I mean, there's there's no words. It's you know the, the the word of God is revolutionary, and it's alive. And mm -hmm. so, as much as we study the word, the more we realize how much more we need of the word. Mm -hmm. And so, I thank you so much for for. Uh, activating uh, the word in my life, but, but for spending this time with us tonight, um, just to reiterate the importance of our role as watchmen and gatekeepers and intercessors. Um, I, I, I have to get with you to find out when you're available again to, to, to do a part two as, 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 as the Holy Spirit leads, but but we needed this because I, I, I think as a people we need, so oftentimes we, we say we are equipped, but, but, but we go uncovered. Um, yes, God has given us the tools, but so oftentimes we are operating in ignorance because we just don't know any better. We don't know how to use the tools and the resources that God has given us to win this battle. So I want to thank you um, for spending this time with us, for, for, for sowing into our lives, for, for, for making us so much more richer. Uh, I pray that, you know, the words uh, that you spoke tonight would ignite us all and help us to realize the important role that we serve. I, I think it's a, 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 a Archbishop Duncan, Duncan. Duncan's, yeah, who, who says the, he, he talks about the intercessor. And he was like, you know, take away all them titles. I, and I, he has a, he, he talks about all the different titles he have. He said, but his most favorite is, an, is the fact that God has called him to be an intercessor. Mm -hmm. We talked about times when, you know, assassinations were being placed on his life. And because he was able to hear the voice of God, he was able to abort Satan's mission. Or he was heading to go on a plane. And the Lord said, no, don't go on that plane. You know? And, and, and he, just talked, he just talks about how, you know, just, just having that ability to walk and talk with God has given him favor and access to kings and, and um, prime ministers and rulers of nations. And so I pray tonight that, you know, as spiritual gatekeepers, that we would understand the importance of the role that God has given us, the mandate, um, not just to cover our families, but to cover uh, the ministry that we are a part of. And 
on a broader scope to cover uh, the community and the nation at large. So God bless you. Uh, if there's no one else who want to give uh, a thank you, shout out. Um, Jamal, you there or Jamal, you gone? Whoever else. Um, I'm here. I think the youngest on, I'm, my daughter's on the line, Apostle. Oh, One of the twins, Anaya. Uh, can, you, can you give in, in, in a minute or two your feedback from tonight? Um, Anaya's name, while I, when I was pregnant with the girls, um, the Lord gave me the names of Lay and Anaya. Anaya's name means when Jehovah answers prayers. And so from the womb, I knew that she was called to be an intercessor. But I tried my best as a parent not to push uh, the, 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 the call on her life. And I've been able to watch her walk into uh, her name. And so um, when I told her I, I was doing this, it was her idea that she wanted to be a part of it. And uh, she's okay. now a part of the press circle now, 16 years old. But she understands or, or is, is, is growing and, uh, in God to understand um, the mantle and the call on her life. Uh, Anaya, are you there? Can you unmute your line? And yeah. Give, okay. Give your feedback. Good night. Good um, night. I was just very quiet, um, basically because I, I just wanted to observe. And just, sometimes you have to sit back and just, you know, take in everything that, that, that God wants to say. So I just tried to stay a bit quiet. And, and I mean, most of the questions that I, I even had or thought about, everyone already asked. So I want to thank you, too, because. This was amazing. Um, I really, it's really hard. Sometimes it can be really hard, especially with my age, because yeah. even oh, yeah. I was just sharing today with my mentor, sometimes sometimes people really don't take you seriously, especially even when you're praying. It's like, how could a 16-year-old tell me this is going to happen in my life? Especially when you have a prophetic mantle and all that, it's just, it's a lot to to really even believe in yourself sometimes if other people yeah. don't believe in you. So I want to thank you. And I'm also a dreamer. And recently I, I've been having like these dreams where it's like, um, it's like the devil kept, keeps trying to attack me and I constantly fight in the dream. So I want to thank you for answering that question as well. And it's just, this is just, this is a really amazing platform to be a part of because a lot of the time, it's like we can't fully seek, you know, guidance. It's like we're trying to figure out um, if anyone else seeing or going through what I'm going through. So thank you again um, for just spending your time with us. And I compliment you because it's not easy as a teenager. I know it's not easy because there's so much things out there. And, you know, just peer pressure alone and the norm and everybody doing everything else. and. You know, my kids will say, well, why God got to go on me? I mean, everybody else having fun, you know? Um, and you just want to really be a part of the crowd and be a part of what's going on. Sometimes you just want to be a teenager. And so I know that's not easy. And sometimes you want people that will speak your language, you know, to help you to understand what is being said and what is happening. So I appreciate you and what you're sharing. And I want to encourage you to just keep on and be the great influence that you're called to be. Be that person, that leader, that pioneer. Because every and any young person could do what everybody else is doing. But it takes a strong young person to say, no, let's start an SCM. Let's follow Jesus. Let me get, you'll be surprised of how many persons or how many young people really want to know the Lord. I was a devil in hell and I started SCM at Prince William. And because God was calling me. And I, I, I started the SCM and walk away and say, okay, y'all finish that. I go and have fun. And the SCM grew. But I didn't stay, and I win a lot of people to Christ, and I was like, no, no, I was fighting. You know, I had no one to guide me and to help me. So don't be afraid to be different and to stand strong, because you're already strong. You have great backup, and you have a great foundation. 
So let's continue to soar, even though it might seem not be the norm. And, you know, sometimes it is difficult, like I say, just, you know, being, because I grew up, I, I had to hang with my mother all the time. Oh my God. When she went to pray, she go to pray for this one. I had to be there. I, oh, I absolutely, I, I hated it. I said, mommy, why are you always praying? Leave God alone. You can't give him a break. You don't make tired. But I didn't understand. So you have an awesome foundation. And I didn't know that her taking me from prayer meeting to prayer meeting and praying for people was her laying a foundation for me. So I pray that God will continue to cover you and to keep you as he raises you up to be a leader and to be um, an awesome army, an awesome tool in the hands of God for the generation, for the gener for your generation and generations that are older than you are. And people will begin to see who you are and begin to follow the Christ in you. The Bible says, child shall lead them. And so God bless you and then keep you. And you continue to stay focused. Whatever you do, stay focused. It's not popular, but I'm telling you, you'll be good and excited that you stay the course and you stay focused and stay with God. So thank you so much for sharing that. I appreciate that. From a young person, I'll take it. Thank you. Uh, Sister Merrill, could you close us out in prayer, please? Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you once again for everyone represented here tonight who have devoted themselves to intercession for others. Father God, we pray that you give us knowledge of your will and we pray accordingly. Give us, Father God, spiritual wisdom and understanding. Make our prayers fruitful. Strengthen us with all your glorious power and give us endurance in the ministry of prayer. Father God, protect us as we take up our weapons of spiritual warfare. May we be filled with joy and thankfulness. Father God, and we cover every household represented here tonight. Father God, we come against every plan, every attack, every strategy, every spiritual weapon that is formed against every household here tonight. Father God, we cancel it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father God, we just thank you for your covering, your protection. We thank you that a hedge of protection is around every household tonight, Father God. We pray, Father God, for our pastor, Pastor Monique Kinsey, strength and guide her, keep her, protect her, Father God that she walks in your favor, Father God. Every attack of the enemy, Father God, we cancel it right now against our home, right now against our loved ones. Father God, we also place a hedge of protection around Apostle Fletcher, Father God, as she continue her work. Every plan of the enemy, Father God, against her right now, we cancel it right now, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, just give her that power, that power to cancel everything of the enemy, Father God. And each household represented here tonight, Father, they have that hedge of protection of fire. Anything that comes up against us tonight, Father God, or today, this month, this year is canceled in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you again, woman of God, for being a blessing and for being the midwife that God is using in this season to cause us to come into our own and to give birth to everything that God has deposited in our life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. May the blessings of God continue to rest on you. Amen. As your enlargement of territory, <laughs> sometimes... God, uh, you need to go to Samaria. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. So, yes. so, so as you as you are being shifted and expanded across the globe, God just wanted you to take a reroute. Oh, <laughs> he shoots you. Yes, across the globe. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. God bless you. Okay. Thank you so. Much. Good night, right. everybody. Good night. I am. Um, I recorded it, Pastor. So I'm gonna send it to you, okay, Apostle? Thank you very much.